When it comes to applications of trigonometry, that usually means word problems. Now, as we said before in this class, the big challenge of word problems are the words. Can you interpret the words in a way that's meaningful and consistent with the way that the problem is presented? And so we're going to look at one example of this. The book actually has a picture. We're going to start off without the picture and just see if we can make sense of the words first. Two radar stations located 20 miles apart both detect a UFO located between them. The angle of elevation measured by the first station is 35 degrees. The angle of elevation measured by the second station is 15 degrees. What is the altitude of the UFO? So take a moment and just try to draw a picture of what this is. Uh, don't worry about solving anything yet, just set up the picture. Okay, so what is our picture? So the picture looks like this. We have two satellites. I'm just gonna put one over here and one over here. So these are both satellites and there's 20 miles between them. The angle of elevation measured by the first station is 35 degrees. So remember, angle of elevation is angle measured up from the horizontal, from the ground. So it's gonna point up this way. It's gonna be 35 degrees. And the angle of elevation from the other one is going to be 15 degrees. And the question is, what is the height? What is the altitude of this thing? So we are interested in that distance right there. Okay, well, there are a number of things we can do with this picture in terms of trying to solve what's going on. Um, what I'll do is, now that we have this picture set up, I want to draw it again, but I want to draw it with things labeled in a way that's a little bit easier for us to work with. So. Call this one alpha is 35 degrees. Call that one beta is 15 degrees. Leave that like that. Gamma is the whole angle here. This is 20. I'll drop the units just because it'll make things easier to write, but miles is down here. And so we have A is not known, B is not known, C is 20, alpha is known, beta is known, and gamma is not known. So immediately from this, we can see that we can solve for the angle gamma because we have two out of the three angles. So you can do this mentally probably, but we'll work it out. 180 minus 35 minus 15 is equal to 130. So this is a 130 degree angle. Now we don't know the rest of these values here, so we're gonna to have to sort of think about it a little bit. What can we do? Well. Because we're in this section, you're going to guess we're going to have to use the law of sines. The law of sines works with the full triangle. And so what we're going to do is we're either going to have to solve for A or solve for B, because that's really the only piece of information we don't know. Uh, so I'm going to solve for A. So sine alpha over A is equal to sine gamma over C. So sine of 35 degrees over A is equal to sine of 130 degrees over 20. Move the terms around, multiply, cross multiply, and do all that stuff. 20 sine of 35 degrees over sine of 130 degrees. So that value of A is equal to 20 times sine of 35 divided by sine of 130. 14.998, so 14.98, and again, units are miles, so this is in miles. Now, we could go ahead and solve for B from all of this if we wanted to, uh, but it turns out that this value B really isn't important. What we want to figure out is this value H, and so we'll draw another triangle with just this part set up. So beta is equal to 15 degrees, we have A here, which is now 14.98. This is a right triangle. We don't have this length. This length right here is not 20 because 20 is the full thing, but we actually don't care because we want this one. And now we have to go back to our previous trigonometry experience. What trig function relates this angle with these two sides? We have the opposite and the hypotenuse. And so that's gonna be the sine. Sine of uh, 15 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. And so we can calculate h. h is 
times sine of 15 degrees. And so h is equal to 14.98 times sine of 15, 3.88. And so our answer is, th is that this, uh, alti this UFO has an altitude of 3.88 miles. The UFO has an altitude, altitude of 3.88 miles. Okay. And so in doing this problem, what were the big steps? The big steps, first of all, is just getting the picture. If you draw a good picture, then the rest of it should follow. If you draw a bad picture, you can chase yourself in circles and get all sorts of things wrong. So be very careful in setting up that picture. From there, you're just gonna to have to start playing with it and seeing what happens. We could have done this solving for B instead of solving for A, it doesn't matter. This isn't something where there's just one way of doing it. Once you have one or the other, then you now have a right triangle and you have to remember things that we've learned previously about right triangles and apply that information to finish the problem. And a lot of the problems are gonna work this way where you're gonna to have to play with it a little bit. Uh, it's very rare that uh, to be able to say all the problems are going to be solved using the exact same technique. You're going to have to take each one as they come and take a look at it and see what information you start with and see what information you can learn from it.